Cool. Well, thanks for being here today. Uh, this is not going to be a big technical talk. In fact, this is the only technical thing that's going to happen is I'm going to advance the slides. But I'm going to share some stories from my personal life. I've been doing this, uh, sharing my story about mental health, and that's what this is about, really. This is my journey with health and happiness and uh, that I call the, uh, the iceberg. And so um, I've been sharing this for about two years, the story. Uh, it's, it's, it's highly emotional, so it's, it's not just because I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but it's also highly emotionally charged. I'm going to share some things that I don't really tell people when I meet for the first time. A lot of you guys, I don't know. There's a lot of other people that know me. And so um, anyway, so I think back to third grade in uh, Lone Grove, Oklahoma. So I'm sitting in the classroom, and uh, my mom and my uh, stepdad have just gotten a divorce. Um, we left. We, li we were living in Arkansas, came back to Lone Grove, where, I, where I'm from, where I hail from. And I'm sitting in the classroom, and I just get this uh, overwhelming sadness and lonely feeling. And that's where I met it, the darkness. Uh, so when I was thinking about this talk, sharing these things with you, I look back, and in that classroom is where this all started. And I think if we're really honest with ourselves, this is our life. And so I call it the iceberg. So my wife gave me this idea. We were talking about these things. We share openly about mental health subjects. And she goes, it's kind of like an iceberg. You know, a lot of times you hear the up and down, the roller coaster of life. And she goes, this sounds just like an iceberg. So here's what normally, here's what we share. The top of the iceberg is the, uh, the Lego movie theme song. Everything is awesome. You know, like... <laughs> We see you guys today, and you're like, how you doing, Corey? And I'm like, everything is awesome, you know? It's sunshine and success. This is, and, and the top of the iceberg are the things that are going awesome. It's, it's the PR version of your life, right? So that's what, when, you, when we talk and we do ch chit-chat, how are your kids, Corey? How is it? They're awesome. They're great. Sunshine and success. How's, how's work? Had these conversations yesterday at uh, uh, an event we, we went to. Uh, across the street, and, uh, you know, just how's business? Hey, it's great, man, you know? It's that, it's that top level that you want everybody to see. And I have a background in public relations, journalism, things like that, so I'm really good. And I've been practicing since I was a young man to, or a, a young boy uh, to say, to make my iceberg, the top of my iceberg, look really, really good, okay? But in reality, if we're honest with ourselves, that's what's going on. That's the complete picture, okay? So I realized this as I struggled with the stuff that happened underneath the service. I'm going to share those stories, uh, how I came to five years ago, started on this journey, how I came to be able to actually share stuff very intensely personal, like I've been through a divorce. I've been through depression. Because I was really good at showing you the top, and the bottom was the stuff that was sinking me down. And I think the challenge today for, for you from my personal experiences is we got to start talking about the stuff on the bottom. There's a lot of people today, you might have got here, something's going on in your personal life, in your family relationship. You might be struggling with health. Your business might be sinking. You might be thinking, how am I going to pay my bills? I got the WordCamp US, but how am I going to pay my bills tomorrow? And this is the iceberg. This is the authentic human experience, I believe, is that the top and the bottom. we got to talk about the top. We should share the top with each other. All of our celebrations, all of our 5% happiness stuff, we should say that. Talking to Brad Williams, I want to ask him about his son, Lucas. That's the top stuff. The other thing is, as an aside, I say, are you sleeping? <laughs> are you still happy you were a parent? Because sometimes I don't always rejoice in, ha in having two little kids that wake me up in the middle of the night and have fevers. That's being honest, right? OK. So the bottom stuff, here's this list of things. Just try to think, this is from my own life, but I bet you there's things here that resonate with you today. Anger, frustration. Every time I've shared, every single time I've shared, and I did not for a long time share publicly, many of our long-term customers did not know I went through a divorce and, uh, and remarried. They think my wife today was the wife they might have met eight years ago because I'm really good at sharing just the top. What, you, what I want you to see is right there. But 
You look at that list. It gives me heartburn thinking about it a little bit. Insecurity, every single day for me, waking up. No matter what I've done, no matter what I've achieved, no matter how many pats on the back I get, I wake up to that. Criticism, hate criticism, fail, failure, fear. You only hear the good stuff. In the bio, you only heard the good stuff, right? That our friend just shared about me. You didn't hear the bad stuff, right? Now I'm telling you, and you're like, God, I need to walk out. But uh, money problems burn out. That's the bottom of the iceberg, and that's probably just a glimpse of the iceberg. Now, at the bottom of the iceberg, I want to point out is depression. That's the scary stuff. That's the stuff that I realized, having dealt with depression, having learned a little bit more about depression, having talked to people who have struggled with it their entire lives, that's the scary stuff I don't mess around with. Is when you get to the very bottom of the iceberg, at the depths, is where you find depression and even worse things. And uh, I don't mess around with that, by the way. So, you probably think, so Corey, why are you sharing all this stuff today? And it's because, uh, hey, I want you to know something. So, you read my bio, hear these things, and you go, maybe Corey's got his stuff figured out. And the reality is, I don't. Okay? So I share that because I've had some level of success, my definition, definition of success, maybe not yours, but I've had some level of success, but that's all you mostly see, because that's all I want you to see, or that's all people want to talk about. But I share these things because about five years ago, I got into a business group in Oklahoma City. Guys that had been there and done that, built big companies, amazing men, some of the best friends in my life, and uh, we've met every month for three hours for, for the last five years, sharing the depth. This is an iceberg group. We go down to the depths. And uh, every single de time we have met for the last five years, I repeat to myself over and over and over, I'm not alone. And that's a pretty good warm and fuzzy feeling to go, man, these guys who I think have everything put together perfectly, have been there and done it, are just like me. They have the same problems with different names attached to it. So the message today I want to tell you, if I don't pour water on the laptop, is um, <laughs> I didn't tell you this would be a polished speech, by the way. But uh, you're not alone. So here's my story. Um, so I shared this two years ago, and I said this is the first time publicly people have heard some of these things. But my iceberg story I want to share with you today is from about five years ago, where all this kind of started. So five years ago, top of the iceberg looked like this. My lifelong dream was to publish a commercial book. And in that year, my dear friend, Lisa Seddon Wilson, said, would you like to co-author a WordPress for Dummies book? And I go, I'm a dummy. I love dummy books. If I want to learn about investing, I go buy Investing for Dummies. And she asked uh, me, along with about four or five other people, to co-author a book. So I got to check that off. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go to a bookstore and see my name on an actual book. And uh, for dummies, but um, hit a million in sales. I don't tell you that to brag at all. I tell you that it was a video game number for me. Like, oh my God, we, I got the statement at the end of the year or whatever. And I go, we, we did it. We did it. We hit the high score. You know, I don't take all that money in my pocket, but it just felt like, it's just a video game. It's just like, you know, I found this geeky way to find, you know, the, my kind of game as business. And we hit that, and it was fun to see that on the statement. I go, we might have just like $2 over, but we, we did it. And then uh, Backup Buddy, so that's our hit product that we've done. And uh, that launched that year. That changed our business, my life. Lots of people's lives have been helped by it. Huge thing that came out that year. The second is we did some geeky things as a team. We went on an RV road trip. So we, we got eight sweaty geeks, and bless her heart, Lisa Saban Wilson, in an RV. We drove from, she flew to Oklahoma City, and then we drove from Oklahoma City to Boulder, Colorado, for WordCamp Boulder, in that, in that RV. And bless her heart, she still talks to me and likes me and our team. But it was really cool. We had a lot of fun. And driving an RV in, in Denver is kind of interesting because every little inch that you move the RV and Maybe if she was standing in the back, you made her a little sick when you did that. But uh, so, you know, I get that joke. Okay, the last is started speaking at WordCamps and it was fun stuff. Um, okay, that's the stuff you would have saw if you were in my life, around my life, watching in 2010, 2011. That's what I would have catered and shared with you, right? 
Here's what was really happening in 2010. Um, so, uh, wife of seven years and filed for divorce uh, the week after we came back from Word Camp Denver. My team didn't know. Uh, most of my, what I would say, my dearest friends didn't know. For six months before that happened, they didn't know what was going on in my life. No one that truly cared about me knew what I was going through because I uh, put myself into self-seclusion and pride, ego, whatever you want to call it, embarrassment, shame. Um, I didn't tell anybody what was really going on in my life. And so when people go, all of a sudden, you're filing for divorce, what's going on, right? Okay, my team didn't know for a while, and then finally they did know, and they got drugged along by it. I, uh, I slept in our office. We have Ikea furniture, you know? And I was like, I got no place to go because I'm too prideful to ask anybody to, to let me have their couch. But we got couches at the office, and that thing creaks, and, man, I couldn't sleep very well that night. Uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting. So I slept a couple of nights in the office. Here, here's this um, person that's run a business and had some success uh, professionally. I, I was on the height of my life professionally, and I was at the lowest of my life personally. Um, Absolutely miserable. I love my job at iThemes because I've had a jo different job for the last, since I was 16, every two years I've had a different job until I got to iThemes and I've been doing it for nine years and they haven't fired me so far. But best job I'd ever had in that year, I said I'd rather go anywhere else but here. Uh, and it was the first time I didn't want to go to work. And then first time in my life someone, a uh, highly trained licensed person said, you are, you are suffering from um, he called it low-grade depression, and it offered to uh, put me on, on medicine. And that was, a, that was a cold shower. So there's my iceberg. So yesterday, one of uh, my business colleagues and friends asked me, Corey, you know, on your blog, you, you write a lot about up and downs and stuff like that. So how's everything going now? And I was like, up and down, up and down. Like, the iceberg doesn't change. Uh, I might not be dealing with the same things I was in 2010 and 2011. My iceberg today, that if we go back to that screen, it talks about uh, insecurity, fear, anger, all that stuff. It's still there. I've added a new no nuance to my iceberg, and that's my uh, two lovely children. <laughs> they provide some of the highest highs, and then I've never felt more like a failure than as a parent. The parents just laughed. Because you know how it is. Never in my life have I thought, I'm going to mess these kids up forever. <laughs> They're, I'm going to invest in money and, and so that, just so they can get a lot of counseling. <laughs> Forget school. Is this resonating? Yeah. Thank you for that feedback. So that's my iceberg. So I started thinking... What, what, what held me back then, and by the way, what still holds me back? There's still stuff in my eyes down below I don't share with people. Maybe one person, maybe two person, maybe the professionally licensed counselor that I pay that doesn't see me at Thanksgiving, and I don't have to say, could you pass the cranberries? He may know. My wife may know some of those things, but a lot of people don't know. There's still things down my iceberg I'm still working on, man. I am under construction forever. I started thinking, I was like, okay, it's ego. Well, healthy ego is good. You need to have healthy ego. You need to have a sense of self-worth and respect for yourself, right? Ego's good. There's a bag of ego when it gets into pride. Pride's good, though, right? I should be proud of my team. I should be proud of my children when they do things, right? Pride's, pride's a good thing. But there's that negative side when you go, when it becomes a barrier to seeking help. And that's what, back in 2010, when I started thinking about it, I go, it's self-defense. So I, somebody asked me the question, why'd you do that? And I go, you know, it's really it's self-defense. I, I share my story. Part of, I'm blatantly honest with you. I share my story because you won't have to dig it up to find it. If I tell you, I'm on the offense. I don't, I don't tell you things because I'm defensive about it. I don't want you to know some things. It makes me sweat. It makes me uncomfortable. I've got shame, pride, embarrassment, guilt, whatever those things. These are the things that hold us back from actually living the true human life experience at the max level. The things that get in the way is my own self-defense mechanism that I put in front of me. It was, 
it was four months of the worst time in my life, and no one knew until I go. <laughs> I told somebody the other day when I was re recounting the story, I said, I had to go back to being a kid, and I just wanted to tell mom and dad I'm hurting and them to say I love you. But it took four months of being in isolation and crap because I was so prideful. I didn't want people to know that this marriage was going to, uh, to the brink. It was evaporating. Uh, I didn't want to feel any kind of shame or any kind of uh, the guilt I was feeling. I didn't, want I didn't want people to bask in that guilt. That was the self-protective thing. I didn't want people to... In I don't want to feel embarrassed because other people see it and see me naked and just, and just raw and everything. And it's a self-defense mechanism. I think there's a part of that that needs to stay there for me, self-defense. And there's other part that's saying, you are not doing good and healthy things by, sh by locking this stuff up in a key. Matt, my, one of my dear friends and my CEO, or CEO, uh, he, uh, we were talking, he recounts this uh, quote. I'm probably going to butcher it. He goes, my coping, uh, how do I deal with stuff is uh, through a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms. I butchered that quote, but anyway, it's like <laughs> we, uh, we find a lot of very, very bad unhealthy ways to cope, and we lock ourselves up, and we suffer in silence. Part of the reason why I share this message with you is because I know I suffered in silence. And that many other do. There's a stigma about mental health and getting help and counseling. Sharing the fact that I deal with depression. I am manic depressive. I am whatever, the DSM-5 or whatever it is, manual, you go down the list. And, and uh, it's time that we embrace the human experience, the iceberg, and allow people to truly live life free. And part of that is loosening up the stuff that happens un underneath the iceberg. So... I'm going to share a couple things with you real quick. might sound some random, but as I've reflected on what has helped me and what I have clinged to, knowing I'll continue, my, my, my DNA, my habit, my genetics tell me, um, I know I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to hide stuff for the rest of my life. I'm not going to share the iceberg stuff. That's going to be my first default thing is to you know, hide it, bury it, show you the good face, get my pockets where all good and tight, and give you a good smile. That's my first. But these things I'm going to share with you are the things that I have to cling to. I don't do them perfectly, but I go back and go, um, these are the things that saved my life, continue to save my life. The first is what I call my life support team. Now, there's this codependency side you've got to be careful of, but the life support team was the people in my life when I shared uh, what was going on in my marriage, in my life, embraced me instead of pushed me back and away. It's the people in your life that rush in when others rush out. When they see a big fire, they're not standing out going, look at that. That's funny. I, I love to see his misery. It's the people that go, I will pick up a bucket and douse water in those flames. I will run into a burning building to help somebody. Those are the people that matter. So, <clears throat> Before I tell you who they are, um, these, this, this is the, their job description for me. This is what they genuinely offer. Is op they're open, genuine, loving. They're WYSIWYG. Hey, I snuck in a tech thing for you. <laughs> they're what you see is what you get. They're not trying to do a facade. I'm, I met an entrepreneur in Oklahoma City about six months ago. One of the most talented designers in Oklahoma, and one I've ever met probably in my life. And I go, he moved back from another state. And I said, how's things going? He goes, you know what? This guy has known me for 15 minutes. He goes, I went without a paycheck a couple times this year. And I just step back and I go, dude, thank you. Thank you for being WYSIWYG. Thank you for being the full spectrum of iceberg. You could have said, dude, better than ever. Just score this big client over here. No, I went without a paycheck, right? So it's WYSIWYG. The question I ask myself is, if everything got turned upside down, who would I need? If my business goes down the drain, if something terrific and tragic happens in my life, who am I going to need to come in, rush in, embrace me, and say, it's going to be OK. You're going to put one foot in front of the other, and we're going to see some light. I have a dear friend um, who's going through this right now. 
my experience share with him was left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, baby steps. Do you remember that Bill Murray story? Baby steps to the, to the bus. Baby, you got to Google that on here, YouTube that, because you'll laugh. But uh, step in front of the other. I said, you're going to have to take it in, mourn, wallow in it, grieve in it, be sick by it, and then you're going to have to vomit it out and take the next step the next day. So those kind of people. So if you're married, you're dating, significant other or spouse, that's my first partner, Lindsay. Everybody uh, that knows me or my story has been saying, where's Lindsay? And I go, you guys love her more than me, and that's okay because I like her too, better than me most times. My first lady, uh, I'm her first laddie, but her, her, my first lady is the one that knows me and, and knows my BS and says, um, are you okay? Maybe you should call Kyle. That's, that's our counselor that we, we uh, share. And those are little, it stings because it's prideful and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's true. My first lady, she's my first partner in life. She knows me, she loves me, cares about me, and me to her, and she's my first support team. My relationship with my wife is my number one priority in this world. But, but besides my own health and happiness, she's my number one relationship. My second, and if you're in, in business, um, I, I realize the importance of a sidekick. I talked to you about Matt Daner. Um, he's my sidekick. Uh, he tells me every day, just by showing up, I'm not alone. We're going to get through some stuff together. This, w this past couple weeks, I had to let somebody go, a family member that was a part of our team. And that kind of sucks. And he was standing next to me the whole time. Got to have a sidekick. Iceberg friendships. That's the WYSIWYG stuff. That's the, let's get past the surface level stuff. How you doing? Oh, it's great. Oh, yeah, 5%, five, 5 quarter over quarter, all that stuff. Iceberg friendships. The one that says, I'm not gonna, just going to give you this. I'm going to give you the full picture. We're going to walk together. That group in Oklahoma City, uh, some of the dearest friends in my life, we are iceberg friends. They call me. I call them. I drop it. I go help them. Iceberg friendships. Nothing held back. Here it is, the full gamut. Um, also, many of the dearest friendships I've held in my life have been in this thing we call the WordPress community. They're sitting here, most of them, today. Those friendships that don't just give me top stuff, they give me everything. They love me and they care for me genuinely, and I love and care for them. And I want to give my time and, and, and uh, not my treasure, they don't need my money, but my time and my love and affection to them, sharing life together. We got this hashtag, family by choice. Uh, next one is my counselor. So I put on my calendar, I realized I said, I think the metric for me is every quarter, I need to put on my calendar alert to say, call Kyle. Not even if you're dealing with some icebergs, below the surface stuff, but you gotta call Kyle and you gotta work on your life. We, we have physical checkups in this, in this country, in the world. We have, uh, there's, I hit 40 last year and I didn't know this, but now I'm gonna have to have all these new checks and everything and I got glasses for the first time. I'm really cranky about it, but we, <laughs> we, we have physical checkups. We go to the doctor and get blood pressure and all this stuff, but we don't check up with here and here. Heart and soul, mind, what goes on underneath the surface. So four times a year, his name is Kyle, and I, we, we talk to them in, in between as needed. Um, yeah, we're WordPress people, right, so we know how to probably push publish a little bit or open a WordPress admin, but journaling is the private version. I've been doing that for the last two years, and every time I'm dealing with something really deep, first I'll do is go to the journal and just vomit it out, get it out. Then I can see it and have perspective on it, and then I can go share it with one of my iceberg friendships, one of my support team people. Journaling has been one of the most amazing ways to get that what's going on inside of you, outside of you, and just put it all on paper, just get that poison out of you for a second, look at it and go, no, 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 no. And now I understand it, and I'm going to go share it with somebody else, so journaling. Uh, there's three books that I would recommend to every single person on the face of the earth, that is access, paper, and pixel, six pillars of self-esteem. Do you remember that show on, S on uh, Saturday Night Live, uh, Stuart Smalley? He looked in the mirror and he goes, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like me. That's this book in the back. Uh, no, it, it's an incredible book, but there's a section, one of the best parts of it is this, um, oh man, there's probably 10 pages of just kind of affirmations. 
what's so funny is you read it and you go, that's, that's really true. It feels like that Saturday Night Stuart Smalley thing. But what is so incredible is it's one of the first lines is, I am worthy. When the first time I, I read that, I said it in my mind. I go, I am worthy. And it was so hard to read it, let alone believe it. The affirmations in the back of that book are worth the entire book. I go back to them when I need reassurance to say, I'm of value in this world. Uh, I won't let others uh, allow to project their value of me on me. But it starts from the middle. That back section is worth the book. Feeling good is the next one. If you battle with the depression, I'm not, a, I'm not a trained licensed counselor at all, but I will tell you this book has made a lot of uh, difference for me. I am not here recommending, suggesting I'm not licensed. I'm not a medical practitioner. I'm simply uh, a broken person sharing his experiences. But feeling good is incredible. There's a whole section about cognitive bias. And, you know, when you, uh, you have, we have a bad sales day or I get, you know, I'm looking at my email and going, is the server's down because we're not getting payment stuff and everything. And I'm like, oh, my God, the, the, the sky's falling, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. And that's part of that cognitive, cognitive uh, bias. And then I get to work, and it's like, Corey, it's okay. We're going to make sales today, you know. Um, the last is Boundaries by Henry Cloud. That was something I had to implement in my life. Here's your homework. Here's your homework. Because I was vulnerable with you today, I'm going to ask you to do something. Uh... I want you to take pixel or paper. I want you to write three things you're grateful for. Part of the top of the iceberg stuff is that we brag, share all the good stuff, but we neglect something, and that's gratefulness. So I want you to say, what are three things, pixel or paper, three things you're grateful for? Then I want you to be real about it, and I want you to say, what is happening underneath that surface that is affecting my life, the people I love around me? It, could, it may not have to be depression or cancer. It could be, I've got to make a change in a relationship. I'm worried about money. Whatever that thing is, your thing underneath the iceberg, be honest and put that somewhere, right? And last is, I want you to go, now, trusted people, people that are iceberg people, that are genuine, they're WYSIWYG, they love me just for me. They know some of my baggage anyway, and they don't judge me by it. Who are those people that are going to rush in in your life now and maybe today you came here and need to make a phone call? You need to step out of session, get somewhere private, and say, I'm dealing with something underneath the surface, and I need to talk, and I need your help. I would be willing to bet there's one person that needs to do that today. Last is, brothers and sisters, you're not alone human experience. I hope I've shared that with you, at least from my life, opened it up. Uh, I'm going to go crash, get into a ball, and try to recharge after this, but uh, you're not alone. Thanks. So we, we got Q&A time if you want Q&A or if you just want to share something. You don't have to ask a question. They can come up to the microphone right here. Regardless, if you guys don't come up, I'm going to be here until through Sunday. Probably a little bit worn out, but um, I love hearing your stories. Every time I share this, um, there's always been somebody that private messaged me, and I go, oh, that is my mandate to continue sharing the story. So, sorry. I don't have a question. Hey, Corey, can you hear hey. me with this? Hey, Ginger. I just wanted to thank you. I just wanted to thank you for your bravery and sharing your story with all of us here today. And since you've been starting, you know, sharing online with us for the last uh, over the last year or so, um, it's a very brave thing to do, and I'm sure it's touching a lot of people. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Ginger. Hey, Corey. Hey, Ken. Hey, um, two things. One thing that my family does at Thanksgiving yes. is we go around the table and what we're thankful for. Oh. And family cannot be one of them. It's just something else. It's just, <laughs> that's, this, that's the cop out for everyone. <laughs> so we, we do something else that way. Um, second thing, right. your iceberg support team that you mentioned. I'm actually, a friend of mine is going through a divorce. Yep. And he's actually staying at my house now. A friend of mine that I've known for 30 years. So I'm his support team, and when I was going through a breakup a few years ago, he was my support team. So I think it needs to go both ways. Absolutely. So 
but thank you for sharing your story yeah. as well. So in the book, Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker, he says there's this thing we did at our house and need to revive it. Um, he said um, they did a study or a test or whatever, and they said this group of executives say, at the end of the day, around the, kit, the table, my wife is very good about saying um, we need to sit at the table mm -hmm. and be a family connected. And uh, his, uh, his thing was to say, go around the table and say three things you're thankful for. Mm -hmm. And the, the uptick, it's one of his, Sean, the Happiness Advantage, incredible book. It would, should have been in my book list, but they're making me think about your Thanksgiving stuff. Right, and what, what we actually did this year is, uh, my thankful for is I was able to help out my friend. Yeah. You, you know, by him moving into our house, and he, he since lost his job. So he's, you know, at the house all the time. I work from home, which is yeah. kind of good and bad, but with him there. But, <laughs> but, you know, for him, he's got a place to stay. And actually, my wife's son moved in as well. So nice. we were thankful that we were able to help people out because we have the space and the ability to help them out. Part of why I do things like that is to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just talking there, like, people come up and they go, man, a lot of people need to hear that. And I go, you and I need to hear that. Mm -hmm. I need a reminder. This is part of me reminding. I get my pride on. Everything's going good. And hey, man, next thing happens, something. I, and I'm going to be back, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a great reminder. I right. appreciate you sharing. So, thank you. One of the things Ken saying is, and I think I should have said this earlier in, a, in my notes and everything, but is that uh, in this industry, to tie this specifically to WordPress and web stuff, is that there's a lot of remote workers now, and then you're introverts and you might be dealing with some, and I feel like I hear a lot of stories of loneliness because there's no social interaction because you're behind a, behind a TV and you've got to force yourself to go out and find this. By the way, there's people sitting next to you now, today, going through stuff. Don't forget to introduce yourself, break into a circle and say, hi, I'm Corey from Oklahoma City. Who are you? Can I, you know, that kind of stuff. But I think this is especially challenging. And I've heard these stories privately from many people is that because you're behind a computer desk in your home office or wherever, uh, there's an, this self-seclusion. Talked a lot of people about that. I think uh, we were talking, sharing somebody at uh, Publish was saying yesterday how it, it's a challenge within our industry uh, of loneliness. I see it in our community. We have a Slack channel and all that. And I, the, we're, there's a webinar going on, and then the Slack, Slack channel, I go, they're talking about baseball and this and everything. I go, oh, I get it. It's water cooler. It's social time. And, uh, but still, there's this heat thing that you have, this warmth when you meet another fellow human being. So I'm sorry. I'm ranting. Or not ranting, whatever. Hi. <clears throat> My name's Amanda. Thank you, Corey, for your talk. I thought... Um, it was just so moving, and I love that you both offered this talk, and I love that um, that it was accepted for this conference. It's just not the kind of thing that you really hear at a tech conference, and I love that our community is about so much more than that. Um, totally I wanted to just add a note on the gratitude fund is that they've actually done studies now with, uh, I think it was heart attack victims or stroke, where they, if they had the um, the folks do a gratitude practice every day, that they had significantly better health returns for that. So Absolutely. it not only just makes you feel good, it literally helps your body. So anyways, thank you. Absolutely. It's the hardest thing to do, though. You're like, I, no, I want to wallow in my misery. But when you start going, I woke up this morning. <laughs> I'm thankful. My heart beats. I get to see people that I love and all that stuff. It's so good. Paul? I wanted to join everybody else in saying thank you. But I also wanted to remind everybody that this next month is really bad for people who are alone and going through things. Yeah. I know uh, six years ago, my wife passed away. Mm. And that first Christmas was just unbearable being alone. So if you know somebody that's alone or if you see somebody that's being alone, especially this next month, it's so important to reach out. And I still have trouble with that. But I'm better at saying what to do in reaching out to people than letting people reach out to me. So, oh, yeah. um, oh, but anyway, yeah. I just wanted to point that out, that this next month is really important. Excellent reminder. Thank you, Paul. Hey, Corey. Um, I want to ask you about the difference between confidence in the moment versus conf confidence over time. Confidence? Um, yeah, confidence. Confidence, OK. So I have been working with WordPress for about 10 years, and it wasn't until about like three years ago that I actually made contact with anyone like in the community. Yeah. Um, over the past few years, I joined some online groups. I spoke at a WordCamp for the first time this last year. I feel a lot better about 
I feel confident helping people that I have an answer for you technically, you know, with WordPress problems. I can speak to you, I can give a talk, I can help you online, but I have a really hard time putting things on record. Like, I don't have a website myself. I managed to somehow get hired without a portfolio because, like, I don't feel it's worth putting out there permanently. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to hear if you had any advice for translating that feeling that you know what you're doing in the moment versus that it's worth, worth it over time. It's called that moment right there. If you look around, there's, uh, I'm going to estimate, two, probably 150 people. That's the moment you go back to. Okay, then you take a next step, and you remember that this day, this moment, that you stood in front of 150 people, your peers, your colleagues, and you shared those things. Then you take a next step, and you remember that, and you rehearse it in your mind. And you don't rehearse the bad stuff. You rehearse the, good stuff. You rehearse the fact that whatever day, this uh, Friday, December 2nd or whatever it is, uh, I stood, <laughs> I have a hard time, as an introvert, we, you shared some story with me yesterday. I took a moment, and that's your moment. So it begins today. You just started it. So you keep building on that, I think, about confidence. Um, the more I've been human and vulnerable, the more human I get back. Now, not to everybody, but for most people. And then I know. That's a test, right? But I think those two things is being willing to be vulnerable in a, when you're ready in your situation, whatever it is. And then for me, I'm, and this is me, I'm directly saying this, this is what I try to do. And the second is moments like this. Cool. Thank you. You bet. Hey, David. Hello. I do have a question. Um, I think it's important that you uh, are vulnerable sometimes and that you share what you're going through with other people. Do you think there's ever a time that you could do that that it might be negative for you to do that? Like maybe it's not the best time to share? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have partners in the room that just, that have, they've actually heard this before, so, but there was, I've got partners, strategic partners in the room, mm -hmm. business colleagues. Um, I had to really weigh the cost benefit of saying I'm going to share some baggage with them in front of that. And I think that's uh, a case by case, personal decision. I can't tell you what that is. But I think um, there are things I should not say. I just should not say. It's not going to be therapeutic. It's not going to be helpful or constructive, right? But uh, I told people when I started sharing the talk, they would go, gosh, I'm so sorry you went through that. And I go, hold on, hold on. It's been five years since that event. Uh, I've, I've, I've grieved. I've done my therapy. I'm not doing this for therapy. I'm doing this because I feel like I want to take a chance to be vulnerable, that my message will help resonate with others. So it wasn't for just to get, you know, oh, poor guy, you went through a lot of stuff. You had to sleep on the couch in the office. Was that, oh, that's pretty bad, right? No, I didn't do that. I've, I've dealt with that personally, right? With in counseling, with my friendships, just my heart and soul, right? Um, but I, you got to use discernment, I think, and just say, am I going to hinder, is it, is it positive and helpful to share? I'm saying in, maybe more in this context, you know, but I mean, with another person, um, I, man, I just kind of go with um, if I'm hurting, the people that love me most want to know I'm hurting. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Michael from Vermont. Um, I wanted to just ask and kind of comment about, like, what are the objective um, circumstances behind uh, this. I think one is economic. I mean, I think like we have this really competitive kind of system we live under and, uh, and we're kind of atomized. I mean, we're like social animals and yet we're all kind of individuals and it's, it's hyper competitive. Uh, and I think also why is there such, on that level, why is there such burnout in the uh, kind of tech community where people kind of live these lives uh, where they, you know, they, they work 40 hours and then they, they do everything else that kind of, because somehow the tech community seems to have kind of demand that. And so like, what's, what's behind that and how do we, how do we get past that? What's, what's your, sorry, what do you think it is? Um, I mean, I think that, um, I am, I'm a socialist, I'll be straight up. I think that part of it is that we have, uh, we don't kind of, 
share and support each other as much. I think there's very much a, I mean, you see it right now in this country, there's very um, politicized atmosphere. And, and frankly, everybody goes to their own individual house. They have to worry about their own bills, their family. Like, we don't have as much support. I think coming to a conference like this is the reason people do it. It's because we want that, but it's not our day-to-day -day existence, and that's why there's like the imposter factor. Everybody feels like they don't measure up because everybody's, you know, showing the top of the iceberg kind right. of thing, and it, you know everybody kind of wonders like how do we how do we get beyond where we're all tweeting about how great we are and yeah. we actually have enjoyable lives. Yeah, you know something you said I wanted to say and I forgot is like I want to say so many times I told this a couple people I want to say hey 2016 you're drunk go home. <laughs> yeah, I think we got like one more minute if someone has a brief question, otherwise. Corey, thank you very much for being vulnerable. I think you're helping a lot of people by what you're doing. Uh, not just the people here, but other people that will hear the talk. And uh, I know I certainly will be recommending to a lot of my friends to listen to what you've said. Um, I'm, I'm curious, you know, you talked about how friends have helped you. Was there any kind of um, a faith or a spiritual type experience in this as well, or was it strictly just the friendships that you have with people in the here and now? That's a whole talk or um, with lots of alcohol answer. <laughs> uh, suffice to say yes, strong uh, spiritual background with me, uh, specifically in the Christian faith. Um, I, I served in three churches before I started Athens. Um, longer conversation we'll have over drinks, however, your answer to the question is, there was a faith-based component to this, um, for sure. Lots of people, I mean, somebody walked past me earlier and go, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. And I go, thank you. God, I like that. You know, who wouldn't want good, happy thoughts? Right. Whatever, you know, even if you don't have my particular God or whatever religious faith, but uh, uh, yes, there was a faith background, for sure. Thank you. You bet. <laughs>